So the age-old question, can a ginger man show up in Munich by himself without knowing anybody and roll into Oktoberfest and have a good time? And by having a good time, I mean, can you meet a group of people you want to hang out with that invite you in, that want you to be friends with their friends without having any social crutch of having any friends or influence of your own? I was planning on coming out here to Prague, where I am right now. It's the first stop on my trip. My buddy said when I was playing the ticket, doesn't Oktoberfest start really soon? And so I pulled it up, and it actually started in five days. So I changed my first stop to Munich. And going there, everyone told me, even once I got there, they were like, you know, Oktoberfest is the kind of place where people plan years in advance. And each brewery puts up a tent where they serve their own Oktoberfest brew. But you have to reserve the tables months and sometimes years in advance. You little section of table for you and your friends. So going there by yourself is very difficult because people show up kind of with their own groups and it's a little bit clicky. But in this video, I'm going to review what I did to try to jump in with people and to have a good time showing up by myself. We're going to talk about if I was successful or not and break down the specific tactics that I use to do such as we walk around the central square here in Prague. So the first thing I did, I'd walked around the city a little bit. It was about noon and it was time to go. I was ready to rock. I figured there'd be people there, you know, even though it goes till 10 at night, they'd kick people out at 11. I figured there'd be some people there. So I start walking down at the train station and as I was walking, I saw this girl who had kind of a darker complexion and lighter hair and just striking blue, bright eyes. And so I wanted to ask somebody which train I had to take there anyway. So I went up and I started rapping with her and, you know, we started talking a little bit. I guess people probably want to know what I said. I just said, hey, what train do you take to get to Oktoberfest or something of the sort? And she said, oh, this and this and this. We started talking a little bit and we walked down the escalator together and we're kind of waiting for the train. She was going to show me the one to get on. And two other guys roll up that knew her. She gave him a hug and she was like, hey, 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 hey. And of course, when two guys come up to one of their friends, they see some guy, some stranger, some tourist who's talking to him, they get usually a little bit defensive. So I was very aware of this. So I backed off. I was cool. We to see what she would do. And she actually did the nice thing of introducing me to both of them, which showed them that I was a little bit safer than some creep that immediately some friend comes over and she's like, get me away from this ginger man. So that was a good sign for them, but they still weren't completely bought in. So what I did from there, I said, hello, you know, very engaging handshake, made nice, strong eye contact. Then I actually backed off. I didn't try immediately to jump in their group or do anything like that. I actually kind of stepped to the side and let them form a little triangle and talk a little bit and catch up. I kind of walked around to look at the train and things like that. And then at the right time, I jumped in. And when you start with a question, you want to add, I know this may sound a little bit strange, but you want to add as much value you can before the question because the question itself is just a little bit value leeching, right? You want their knowledge, you want them to answer you. So I always try to make it as engaging as possible by just saying a little piece of information that I know. Whether it's really that exciting or not, it doesn't matter. So I said to him, say, I actually heard that, um, I started with say like some grandpa, oh say, I actually heard that the tents are very different and it's different kind of crowds that go to each. Would you guys suggest I go to one over the other? And it actually gives them more threads they can jump on. How, how does that strike you as you hear me saying that versus me saying, hey, which tent should I go to? They're like, whatever tent you want, man, get out of here. It's not engaging, but you appeal to them. You bring up a few more threads that they can jump on to make their answer more interesting. And so they said, they said, yeah, it's crazy. They said, some of the tents are really young. The drinking age around here is 16, which is insane to me coming from the States where it's 21, it's five years before it's out of control. But anyway, um, and so then we started rapping a little bit. We all got on the train and we're talking a little bit more, um, you know, asking questions, but not riddling them with value leeching questions. Like I talked about, like, where should I go this? Yo, I heard about this, this. What do you think about this? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings about this? I think that's a nice way to get information without being a value leech, which I'm always a big proponent of. So we did that and the train, it was coming to our stop. And the girl I was talking to, actually was like going to work or something like that. So she wasn't coming, but the two dudes were like, uh, yo, just come with us. We'll just, we'll, we'll take you around. We'll show you where the, where the tents are. And then you can go and do your own thing. And I was like, yeah, cool. That's great. It'll be a nice way for me to get kind of assimilated. So we get there, we're walking around. Actually, as we're walking there from the subway to the place, one of the things I want to point out that I did, a lot of tourists were there and they were not abiding by the local laws around here. 
um, Prague as well, but Germany even more so, people really follow the law. So like the, tr- the, the stop walks, the crosswalks, they'll wait for the light. Even if there's no cars for miles, they'll stop and wait for it to say walk. So you get a lot of tourists who like, you know, think they're going to be tough and just walk right through. That doesn't show you're tough. That doesn't show that you're not scared of the law. That shows a lack of appreciation and respect for their culture. So while we were waiting there, it wasn't like I was going to try to walk across the street. What are you guys doing? Hey, come on, it's safe. You guys are a bunch of babies. No, I respected it, waited with them while a bunch of other people walked through thinking they look cool. You know, kind of smirk while other people are waiting when actually they're looking disrespectful and low status and low self-awareness and low empathy, all bad things. So that was another thing that we did. So when we get there, we stop at the first place. And I tell you what, they've got the best roasted chicken I've ever had. Like, they're like, oh, you got to get some, I guess they don't have Australian accents. Hey, mate, you got to get some roasted chicken. They, uh, they suggested I get some chicken in my stomach before we started. I was like, I don't really like to eat that much before I drink. Um, but then I saw this chicken come. I was like, oh, I got to try this. So got great roasted chicken and got to talk with them more. And so what was I focusing on while I was talking with them more? Making them feel cool, asking them questions about what they do, and, and, and being interested, honestly interested, and showing you know, that you think something's cool. Make them feel good about themselves. People want to be around other people that make them feel good about themselves. So I was doing that. We started cracking jokes, started sharing some stories. Now, the next thing that I found myself doing that is definitely a, a strong technique, I feel, is... I started telling a story, like they said something, I was like, oh, that that actually reminds me I was in Thailand. And as soon as I said that, the dude jumped on something that was correlated to that, but it wasn't on my thread. He was like, oh, this and this and this. So as opposed to me saying, oh, cool. So when I was in Thailand, what did I do? I completely dropped the thread, go on his thread. I don't care about my thread. My Thailand story is that cool that I got to jump back on it, no. So I said, oh, I said, you know, I was in Thailand, this, this. Oh, no, but I did this and this and this. I said, oh, no way. What about this and this? So I'm actually leaving my thread so much that I'm asking him probing questions about his story and making his sound interesting. I don't care about mine. I got so many threads. I can talk about anything I want. It's not that cool. I'm not that intent on you thinking I'm cool by telling that story about Thailand. So he talks a little about his stuff. It's actually a pretty cool story. And then the dude was very socially aware. So as soon as he was done with his story, he's like, yeah, yeah. So tell me about what happened at Thailand. So that was just a great way not to be sold and hooked on your thread, jumping on something else. And then you get back to it. It just shows a lot of social status. So that was another thing I did. Now, he tells me at that point after we'd wrapped a little bit, we were kind of yucking it up and having a good time. He was like, dude, you got lucky because this is a tough place to come by yourself. You should come with us all night. We're meeting up with like 25 people. We live here, so we know everyone that's, that, that's here. And when the tourists come in, it's really good to be a local. It's good to be a local anyway. But I was like, hell yeah, let's keep it going. So we go to the first place, and now it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. And... This place, imagine like a school lunch cafeteria with all those long tables lined up next to each other, but imagine it 10 times the size and everyone just with huge steins. No, they call them mas, the big uh, stein, the big glasses that hold a liter of beer. Going crazy. They sing this local, uh, I guess this nationalistic German song. Like every 10 minutes, everyone goes absolutely crazy. It's just mayhem. I was thinking it'd be like people kind of trickle it in slowly, like cheers a little beer. Not like that at all, but it was awesome. So we get in there, all the tables are already booked. So the dude goes up and talks to a couple girls who are waitresses. By the way, another kind of interesting fact is that he says that during Oktoberfest, the waitresses, like, they have to work all 17 days or none at all, and they make, like, 15 grand U.S. Maybe that's, like, 13,000 euro um, just doing it, but it's really hard work. They're going around carrying those huge beards you see in all the pictures and everything like that. And they were like, we got one table that's not here yet, but it's a bunch of super rich guys who are going to spend a lot of money. And so you could kind of see they were on the fence as far as having us go there or not. Our whole party wasn't there yet. It was, like, five of us at this point. And they're like, yeah, you can go there. So... I knew that even though they're friends, you know, they're still trying to make money. And so I knew that they'd be a little bit kind of, uh, what's going on, especially with this other dude. So what I was focusing on when the bar staff or these girls that let us be there came around was one thing, good energy. All I want to do is bring good energy to this table. If she comes around and there's four, there's four of us, say two guys and two girls and me, and I'm the guy who she doesn't know, and I'm just there kind of like this, kind of sipping a beer, looking around. 
that's not a good look. That's not good value for the bar. They don't want people like that in there. I mean, this place is so massive, it doesn't matter. But on a micro scale, if you're at a smaller place, this would be more important. But it was important in this instance. I'm smiling. I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm very friendly with them. Hey, hello. You know, even if they don't speak English, everyone knows hello, hello. Big smile. They like that. So then they're getting cool. They're getting more comfortable with us being there. So that was another thing I do. You know, you always want to focus when you can't bring much specific value, well, you can bring good emotion, big smile, good energy. People feel that off you, and that's enough that people will want to have you in their party, or in this instance, for those girls to be cool with us sitting in their section, where they're basically losing out of money, a lot of money from a bunch of foreign tourists that aren't sitting there, and instead we're sitting there. Okay, cool. So that was the second thing we did. Now, it's crazy how <laughs> the more drunk people get, the later in the night, like by 10 p.m., Everyone starts to stand on the seating parts of the tables, which makes no sense because people are getting absolutely hammered drunk and have no idea what's going on. So anyway, by then I had had a good chance to, to rap with a bunch of the tables kind of around us. So like I was going on, you know, just saying what's up, talking with people, seeing where they're from and things like that. So a lot of people, uh, I kind of knew them at that point. <laughs> and it's a good thing because there was this, there was this little kid, I shouldn't say little kid, I don't know how old he was, but this little guy, and um, he was younger. And I saw him at another table. I was going to say something to him. I went over and I grabbed him. I was like, hey, come over here. And so I, I kind of grab him. And as I pull him up to like where we were all standing, he loses his balance, which causes me to completely lose my balance. I did a complete flying bear, like basically arms wide open, flopping on the table right beside us. And of course, it's all girls. So I take out like probably five girls, beers flying everywhere. It was like, oh, you know, everyone's looking, it's crazy, people are screaming. And I was like, no, 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 I was like, I'm fine, I just lost my balance. And everyone's like, you know, kind of on edge, kind of like, is this all right? And then they let it go, it was no big deal. I swear to you, 15 seconds after I get back up and I start talking with this guy, I lose my balance, slip, fall right back on the same group of people. I couldn't even believe it. I was like, this has to be a bad dream. This can't be really happening. So that at this point, people are like, dude, this dude's got to go. And I, I, I wasn't drunk by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it definitely appeared that way just because I, I fell twice in a row and Flying Bear cleaned up everyone at the table. So this was the reason that it was cool that I got to meet those other people because all of a sudden, everyone at the surrounding tables was like, no, no, he's fine, he's fine. Get him back up, he's fine. Because if I didn't have their support, I don't think there's any chance I would have been there to the close. So... That was an important thing that I did. The more friends you have, the more people that'll kind of vouch for you in any situation. What if it would have been a fight? What if you're trying, people are trying to kick you out because you fall on their 90 pound uh, girlfriend two times in 30 seconds? You know, things like that happen. Another thing I did was, I always want to have a, a mentality of empathy. So when I was there, there was one dude who kept kind of checking his phone. You could tell his energy wasn't quite right. He wasn't having a great time. And so I went over to him, I was just like, hey man, you all right? He's like, yeah, 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 I'm all right. And I just give him like a pat on the shoulder. That's, that seems like something small. It happens in a, in a course of five seconds, but that's a big deal. Like some, just as someone to show that empathy, to show that you're aware enough and that you care enough to even just touch base and see how they're doing. Now it didn't completely turn his night around. Maybe he was waiting to text back from a girl or something was going wrong, but that was enough to make them, to make you feel like more than just some random dude who's out there that joined the, the, the club. You know, you're kind of part of the group now. You're all working together, trying to have a good time, trying to feel good. And that was another technique that I used to accomplish that. All right, as I slowly start to walk out of the central square here, I'm gonna close down with uh, another thought that I had <clears throat> that I think is important. When you're first meeting uh, friends within your social circle, at this point, this was my new social circle for the night. Um, whether it be your social circle in your hometown or social circle in this instance, never take any risks. Don't try to be the super cool, super charismatic guy because people are just kind of feeling you out, testing you out. So even if you do something that a couple hours later, once they know you would be considered acceptable, um, it may be a little too much for them. So they're like, what's this guy doing? Why is this guy going so hard? This guy's kind of creepy, he's uncomfortable. And that looks bad for a whole host of reasons because first of all, now they don't like you and they don't want you around. But more importantly, it makes the, your friend or your person in your social circle now who kind of vouched for you to bring you into the group kind of bad. You know, who's this bringing this creep around our friends? You know, we've been friends for years. Why are you bringing him around? By the way, this is the atomic clock, I believe it's called. 
right here. It goes all the way up. It's pretty incredible. I think you can actually take a tour that takes you all the way to the top, but here's kind of a side picture of the square. And I'll get back to it. All right, now let's walk down here a little bit. So, so anyway, so long story short, I did. I had a great time. I met a big group of friends. The group grew, grew as I was there and talking to tables around us. And I did a couple times, you know, when I met these people at these other tables, go over and start from scratch. They didn't know anybody in our group just to show because, you know, some people say, oh, you got lucky because you met those guys early on that uh, brought you in their group. That's not true. I guess in a way it was lucky, it was a statistical, maybe a bit of an improbability that it happened the very first person I talked to. But as you continue to talk to people and be social, the chances of that happening increase and increase and increase. So it was cool that it happened early, so I didn't worry about it the whole time. But even when you get there, if you apply those strategies, I just went over there, good energy, big smiles, you know, toasting, I think toasting is a little overplayed, but in a place like this, it's definitely not. So you can jump on, people are welcoming, even in situations where people come with their families and their so their close knit social groups, you can get in there, you can have a good time. So once again, apply the tactics that I went over today in any environment. Most environments are not nearly as challenging as Oktoberfest on one of the biggest days. It was the first day that the weather was nice. So everybody was out, everyone was there with their friends. Everyone's a little on edge with the tourists, the locals typically don't like them. You can fall in set with a group of locals. You have a great time. I actually met this really cool uh, girl. Her parents uh, have a background in, in uh, hedge funds and finance, which I used to work in. So I ended up uh, going to a bar and getting a couple drinks and hanging out with her afterwards. I just can't think of how it would have been a better night. So. Don't be afraid to go out on your own and apply these principles. Just realize you got to go up, you got to have the good energy, you got to have the confidence that you can get it done, and you got to have these specific skills. Skills. You got to know what to do. You got to know, hey, at that point, I shouldn't jump in and try to be all aggressive to get the friends to like me. No, now is the time to back off, but the only way you learn those skills is by going out and continually applying them. So, you know it's successful in tough environments. Say you got to go to a networking event or something small like that. Say you got to go to a business function and meet some people you don't really want to. Well, if I can do this at Oktoberfest by myself, speaking no German, a giant ginger man falling over people on tables, you can definitely go and be successful in this environment. Baron Cruz, Charisma Matrix here in Prague, and I'll see you next week. Let me ask you, are you truly satisfied and happy with your social skills right now? Where you're at? Are you excited to go to social events because you know you can do well and enjoy yourself? Because if you're not, click here to the left and we can talk more about uh, some products that I have that can help you get to where you need to be so you can really enjoy the weekends when they come around and not feel obligated to go to social events, but rather enjoy them knowing that you'll perform well, you'll make friends, and have a good old time. Now, if you're a single guy and you don't feel confident that basically any weekend that you can get a date with your kind, your quality of woman, then you're not taking advantage of all the tools and things that we have at our our fingertips nowadays. So you can click here and look at the products that I have to help you get your skills and your abilities and your comfort with women up to where they need to be.